Welcome to today's video. Before I'm gonna jump into the action, I would like to wish all of you guys a happy new year. Stay healthy, stay strong, take care of your health. That's very, very important. It's not gonna bring you anything if you work very hard, if you're very dedicated, you're very disciplined, if, you're, if you lack um, taking care of your health. So make sure that you do the things that are very important to stay healthy, eat clean, exercise on a regular basis, and then you set a very, very um, solid foundation in order to achieve your goals, in order to achieve whatever you want to achieve in 2019. It should not only be a yearly goal, it should be a daily, weekly, monthly goal to always try, try to stay healthy. That's the very first step. If you want to become successful in poker, if you want to build a business, if you want to <clears throat> create better relationships, more relationships, whatever it is, um, the, ver the most important layer is to, to be healthy. You cannot achieve anything if you get sick, if you are constantly having low energy because your nutrition sucks, if you're not working out on a regular basis, you have back pain, you have muscle pain because you're just sitting on the couch every day. So make sure you have this on point and then I think it's very, very likely that you're gonna achieve your goals in 2019. So best of luck for that. And now we're gonna do some poker content together. I would like to yeah, talk about some bounty spots. So we're gonna mainly focus on bounty today, but I also gonna have a very interesting ICM spot because this is one of the questions I think that it's definitely the top five. Ben, I, I, I have a lot of deep runs, but then I'm running short. I'm not reaching the final table or I constantly make eighth place, ninth place. And based on the, the coachings I have with, with students, I feel like the, the, the main reason is that people are too tight. And my, my, some of you guys might have seen, I had a deep run on the uh, last Sunday in the, in the Supersonic and I jammed a very questionable hand for probably most of you, but I wanna show you guys that's the right move in the long run and these kind of moves will make you more money in the long run if you run deep. It's very important to not be afraid to, to go all in with three dudes off suited in certain spots. I'm gonna show you later which spot I'm talking about. So bounty and short stack ICM spots will be the main topics for today. So grab a carrot and enjoy today's video. And let's start with the first 10, A7 suited. The positioning is a bit weird. So we are under the gun, looks like we're in the big blind, but we are under the gun as you can see. And a few information, it's a $1,000 PKO October tournament from the last Sunday. It was uh, from the winter series, <clears throat> starting stack 100,000 chips and 507 players entered the tournament and we are 170 players left. It's a PKO, so 50% of the prize pool goes into the regular prize pool and 50% goes into the bounty prize pool. So far we have 437 and 50 cents on our head or collected. So we basically have one and a half, roughly one and a half starting bounties, like 1.6, 1.7 starting bounties but that's not so important. Like, it's important to consider that our bounty is somewhere around 1 1.5, 1 1.6, 1.7. So our bounty is relatively low. However, given the <clears throat> stage of the tournament, we still have very few chips. So the question is here, we are 12 big blinds under the gun. Do we wanna go all in with the sand? Do we wanna raise or is it even a fold? And how should especially the big blind react to our shaft? and what should the other players call in this spot. And before you continue watching this video, I would like to or encourage you to pause for a second and to think about what would you call in a normal freeze out tournament and in a bounty tournament in this very spot. So think about, okay, it's a freeze out, no bodies involved, under the gun goes all in for 12 big blinds, you're here in the big blind, uh, goes from under the gun all in and you're in the big blind, what would you call against the 12, 13 big blind shove? Then second question, what would you call in this situation? And it can even be a $10 tournament. It doesn't matter. You face an all in, can be an unknown player and he has one and a half, 1.6, 1.7 starting bounties with 12 big blinds, slightly over starting stack. What would you call? And then we're gonna look into the um, solution in a second. We don't need the supersonic payout structure yet. This is important for later. And 
So this is our under the gun shoving range. As you can see, A7 suited is very, very quick. How to analyze these spots, how to set up podium resistance calculator, it's a little bit more difficult. This is something that we teach in our bounty course because you need to make sure that you set up the right, right um, price pools. You don't necessarily need to put in all the, the payouts for each respective position, especially here since ICM is not so important. Um, you just need to make sure that here you set on first that there are 250k price pool in the um, uh, in play, and then you set up all the remaining 21 tables uh, with roughly around the, the chips that are in play. So in the lobby, we have um, 507 players, so 507 players times 100,000 chips, we have around 1 million chips in, uh, sorry, 50 million chips in play. And you need to make sure that on the, I think we have 21 tables with around eight players each um, that each table or the, the the sum of all tables together is not, let's say, it, it can be, it can deviate a little bit from the one, from the 50 million chips can be 51, 52 or 48 million chips, that's all right. But if you somehow set it up, you have like 10 million chips in play or 100 million chips in play. The problem is that the correlation between the chips and the bounty is going to be falsified. So keep that in mind to have the, the price pool set up properly. Of course, if ICM is going to be important, then you of course want to put in the exact pairs, what, what you get for first, second, third, that's then important for final tables, final two, final three tables. And of course, it's a little bit of work to enter all the, 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 the payouts, but it's worth it. It's really worth it. You need to put in the work. And if it's a non-ICM situation, <laughs> <laughs> it's totally okay to just put the entire price pool uh, on first. And then you can analyze the spots. And uh, I will also show you a little shortcut how to uh, uh, analyze these spots in a second. So we have here him shoving and um, uh, us shoving this range. Now it's debatable whether we want to take this marginal spot. Keep in mind that compared to normal freeze out that you will have less first in spots because people fight for bounties, right? And they will also play more aggressively against you. So in bounties, you're probably more incentivized to call, um, to, to jam a little looser. So usually in a freeze out, I would definitely skip this spot. And now if I know it's just 0 0.01, I would probably also skip and go for limp or min race. I think these bottom, because we're gonna raise min race aces, kings and queens. I think race folding a seven suited or king 10 suited or ace 10 off is, or ace 10 off probably just a shaft, but a seven, ace eight suited, king 10 suited, queen jack suited are definitely um, legit candidates to put in as race forward. And since there are only four combos each, uh, we can also mix in ace five suited, ace six suited, probably even uh, yeah, jack 10 suited, and then balance it with aces, kings, and queens. Um, so this is big blind's calling range, assuming that we're shoving um, this range. As you can see, kings, aces are sometimes trapping. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, so the calling range is something like this. And yeah, it's not extremely loose. And what I also would like to show you how you can apply the theory of bounty tournaments, bounty math in game. So of course I cannot explain you the entire bounty math uh, here. It takes an entire course, um, but I can give you some help, which will definitely push your win rate in bounty tournaments heavily. A starting bounty is always worth around 33% in chips and it increases throughout a tournament because bounty money is taken out of the bounty price pool, thus a bounty is going to be more worth and more worth and uh, throughout an entire tournament. So it goes to 35, 40%. At this stage, it's probably gonna be around 40%. So we can assume the, the Chips, oops, what happened here? This is actually not the hand. Uh, this is the hand. Yeah, no, I got it. So our bounty is probably worth in chips around 40K. 
um, or 35K, 38K, and if you now consider it's one and a half, 1.6 starting boundaries um, here for simplicity, then it's, yeah, going to be 50K in chips. So we're effectively jamming around seven to eight big blinds. Like this is not 100% correct, but it gives you an idea, especially for uh, when the chips, when they're like 20, 25 big blinds, when the stacks are bigger and there are more bounties in place and you wanna have at least some sort of orientation, what is the, um, yeah, what is what is the equity drop, right? So what is, what is the, the real stack like here we're jamming 13 big blinds with a bounty but in a freeze out it would be equal to let's say an, an eight big blind seven and a half big blind open shove if you consider the bounty that is in place it's not 100 it's it's not correct at all that's where you need to put in the work outside the tables but especially when you're clueless it gives you an idea what you actually uh what kind of effective stack size you're actually uh, facing. So, and we can actually make um, some analyzes together. So what I was doing here, first of all, this would be the calling range if it would be a freeze out. So as you can see, this would be the calling range if villain would not have a bomb, like if it would be a freeze out, right? So looks pretty reasonable to me. I would be skipping ace nine suited for sure. I would be skipping king jack suited. I would be skipping fours. I would probably be skipping ace 10 off as well. I think under the gun range here in a freeze out, it looks something like this. So even with ace 10 off, we're not performing that well. And I think especially against an unknown, they might not be jamming king nine, 10 nine suited every single time. And then ace 10 off becomes more and more break even slightly minus EV. So probably you definitely want to be skipping here those bottom combos and if we now assume that we're shoving around not eight to nine big blinds from under the gun this is then our calling range uh, sorry this is our calling range in the big blind and as you can see it's kind of similar to the bounty uh, spot um, again it's not 100 perfect and also here the combos we're shoving here are a little bit also the, the type of fans we're shoving are a little different than in the in the bounty spot because we're here shoving more broadways and 10-9 suited, 9-8 suited, which you will never want to be shoving in a, in a bounty tournament. You will always want to be shoving more high card heavy. So you should always keep that in mind. Thus, the calling range is a little different in terms of the hand selection. However, if you can see um, that it's definitely closer together 22.5% and 18% here, right? 19%. Um, again, it's just for you, for in-game, something you can hold on to before you get totally lost. Um, in addition, you need to study outside the tables to see what are the real ranges. What can I open shove here for 13 bigs from the gun in this tournament stage? What is big plan supposed to call? And then it's the same with ICM guys, right? We have something, some some rule of thumb, some help we can we can use to get some sort of an idea, right? For in game, that gives you a, that we at least not make huge puns or huge mistakes. That's what their purpose is. They're protecting us from making big puns. So, for example, here for big blind, to totally overvalue our bounty because we only have one and a half starting bounties, and then he starts calling 10 8 off or something. Right? If you would realize, oh, okay, it's it's technically around seven to nine big blinds in a freeze out. I would never call 10 8 off against the seven to nine uh, open shove from under the gun. Um, so then he has something where you can start from. Um, that's what what is where it's, it's helping you a lot. Um, and as you also can see, if you and this is something you will get when you buy the bounty course uh, you get this calculator and you can you just fire these or you just put in these um, information here total players players remaining buy, buy, buy into rec, regular price pool buy, buy into bounty price pool big blind our stack what what we're shoving so now we're analyzing the spot from big blind's perspective small blind big blind how many players on the table uh, villains all in size starting stack and number of start bounties of the player that is going all in. You calculate and you can see here, 
we need 37% and without a bounty it would be 44%. And if we would give Willen the same open shoving range that Hodimeris' calculator assumes, um, one second, so something like this, this, this is the assumed open shoving range and we need 37%. We take this into the main window and it displays us this range, which is very similar to the range that he wants us to call. Wait, it's here. So you can see, yeah, I mean, there are a few rounding uh, errors, but all in all, you can see it's pretty much the identical range. Uh, so if you have the calculator, you don't need to set up this entire thing here. So especially for calling spots, uh, also for different situations, um, you can solve these spots very easy and yeah, train your understanding for bounties uh, very, very good. So yeah, I went for an all in and all the remaining players folded. And it's also very interesting to see what the other players should be calling. Again here, just put yourself in the situation what would you do if it's a freeze out, your cutoff, your MP, what would you call against an eight big blind under the gun jam? Uh, would probably something like um, fives plus, sixes plus, right? So um, let's see. Okay, here now we also has the option to, um, to call, um, but you can see here for side king which is here he's the earliest position six to seven is somewhat the the borderline um uh, don't get confused here why it says only ace jack is queen it, he of course also wants to play a strategy where he just calls and uses some some all-ins especially in bounties you definitely want to do that where, where is it worth just calling against the another gun player and then folding against action behind um, but you can see uh, technically iso jamming here ace 10 suited fives plus sixes plus Right. I mean, it would be, let's say if, if it would be a normal freeze out for 12 big blinds, we would definitely be folding fives and sixes and probably ace ten suited and ace jack off as well very, very frequently. So um, here for Sweeney, who is in the cutoff, he starts either shoving fives and even slightly profitable ace nine suited. Um, so yeah, you can see here that of course the ranges are a little looser since there's a bounty in play. <clears throat> and I think it's definitely worth um, putting some work into studying bounties because there's so many people that have no idea how to approach bounty tournaments. And you will, right now, it's much easier to gain an edge over these players. Um, and to be honest, whether it's with our bounty course or with other bounty content, I don't, I really don't care. For me, it's important that you guys study the um, the math, the dynamics, the strategy of bounty tournaments, and you don't need to get so deep since the player pool is so weak in bounty tournaments right now that with a little little bit of effort, a little bit of work, you will gain an edge really, really quick. And it's the same with ICMs. The the mechanisms, the the idea is always the same. The situation just changes. The theory is always the, th the same. And once you start applying it over and over again, and of course you also deploy it into practice, the better you will become and the much more um, it easy or the much easier it is for you to, um, to handle all these kind of like complicated spots. Um, Let's jump into the next spot. And you have already seen which spot I'm talking about because I had the wrong replay put up earlier. So this was the final table of the um, 1K Supersonic, Super Su Supersonic on Sunday last week. And we have the situation that we have around 11 big blinds. Billy Levinsky has 10 big blinds. Uh, this guy, Kofunga, is the huge chip leader. Poker Cooker has around 20, 22 big blinds. Romeo Pro has also around 12 big blinds. And Button is a short stack with around uh, 7 to 8 big blinds. 
So it gets folded to us. And the question is, what is our strategy? And of course, I was kind of spoiling earlier already and you've seen me what I'm doing, but I want you guys to really think, what would you do in my situation? If you play a $10 hyper turbo final table, or even if it's a turbo or even a normal freeze out and you have these sort of stack sizes, one, one big stack, a couple of mid stacks, then you have 12 big blinds and you shove against a 10 big blind stack and there's another eight big blind stack. What is the range you would be shoving from the small blind? And for me, and I'm not really sure. I, Billy Levinsky, I, I haven't played so much against him. Um, I don't want to offend anybody here, but I have. I think he's a little less experienced than others um, based on the hands I played with him, but he might just have a read on me. That's why he played the hands a little different than he would play against others. So when I when I tag someone as less experienced or when I tag someone as fish, I'm not saying he's a fish, then it doesn't mean that they're a fish per se in the player pool. They might just do things against me that works in my favor. So of course I'm gonna tag them as less experienced players in my eyes because they do obvious mistakes to me, right? And this is also because I constantly get message, yeah, why do you have tag player ABC as, as a weaker player? I don't care, it just, everyone has a certain play style. Um, let's say Lena might have a place there, play style that I, I is is let's say way way more difficult for me to handle to play against than a play style against Darwin. I mean, I'm just giving you guys random examples. Might not be true in reality, but or let's say Romeo Pro's play style, even though he's one of the best MTT players in the world, might be very good for me because he does things that. I was lately studying a lot and I know how exactly what to do against. So it's always a matter of how you perceive players, what they're doing against you. So don't get offended if you watch a video of mine and I say, okay, here we play against a recreational player or weaker player or less experienced players. So for me, Billy Levinsky was someone to consider as, as less experienced players on the final table. So um, we, we keep that in mind. And let's see what our strategy should be. And this is just Nash. Um, uh, let's give let's let's first look into the Nash ranges. And you can see we should be shoving around 93%, 92%. So nine four off is somewhat a very, very borderline jam. But I think the calling range in general is a little too loose, especially on final tables, if, especially if you play against someone that you think is a recreational player or less experienced. If we take out some of these bottom combos, I mean, would you be calling this if you know there's a, another shorter stack than you? Would you be calling king six suited? I think it's definitely very reasonable to fold these hands. Um, and then you can see that nine four off is just, it, it's even more than 10%, it's around 10% of VV of aces. With 10 big blinds, I'm happy to take. I'm super happy to take. So here, some of you guys might say, ah, but I'm not sure it's nine four off. That doesn't matter. It's about what is plus EV. And if you're questioning yourself why, or why, if you wonder why you don't have that many deep runs and you run short, it's probably because you're missing out these very loose, very quote unquote spewy spots that actually not spewy, it's just as a matter of fact, you're supposed to go all in with those hands. If you would be folding, you would be losing money in the long run or you would be missing out to take an opportunity that, that would you bring money, more money in the long run than folding. So I think we have a clear shaft here and especially on bigger finding tables where I would think that people even call a little tighter given that there's another short stack. Um, it's just so much printing. Uh, card removal effects aren't so huge as nine handed because there are only four players in front of us that have folded. Card removal effects means the likelihood of aces or kings being folded is has a has a certain likelihood, right? So um, if there are seven players in front of us that fold it, it's much more likely that Big Blind will wake up with a calling hand. Unfortunately, uh, he woke up with Ace-10 off. He has an easy call. Uh, but if I remember, he was even tanking a little bit with Ace-10 off. So 
I think that shows me that I'm very, very happy with my all in here and I would do it again. And it should also serve as, as an example for you guys to really reconsider would you be doing these all ins or not. Also, uh, and honestly, I was also a little surprised about the calling range. Um, you can see the pair structure here, by the way, um, that we should be calling that wide. And even, even if, if Willen is calling that wide, remember, 9 4 off is still slightly profitable. If Billy Lewinsky starts folding if just a few of these bottom combos, it's printing. And you should definitely take those spots. Um, do I have this pair structure here? Yeah, I also have it here. And um, so, yeah, I mean, this is here now different. These are different stack sizes. It was for the previous. Um, for the previous analysis of the, the bounty hand. So don't get confused, but this was the payout structure I used for this final table spot. Um, so yeah, you can also see that the stack size here, he has 1.4 million. Everything was set up properly. Always make sure double check if the, the setup, one, two, three, four, five, six players, um, that you have set up the sim properly. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I always encourage people to join our Discord because there we have much more time to talk about hands and you get also feedback from other coaches and other players. And yeah, you can share your hands, share your thoughts, and then we can work on certain spots together. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I see you next time. Looking forward already doing another video for you guys. And then stay tuned, stay strong, stay healthy in 2019. And then see you guys soon. Bye-bye, ciao.